Well, good afternoon, friends. How are you? I hope you're enjoying your lunch here. Hello, everybody on Zoom. Great to see you and great to Zoom with you. And well, uh, I am Marga Hugo, the president of the Rotary Club of Chicago for our guests. And today is my very last meeting as president of the club. So with that, <laughs> I am going to uh, oh, let me tell you one thing. I still, you know, I forgot something. So this is our 5,619th meeting of our club. And this is how I will open my last meeting as president today. And we're going to get started with the program. All right. Well, I, you know, as it must happen with all club presidents, time flies when you are having this role and I am amazed that it has gone by so quickly. So what I want to tell you who are uh, here today and those of you uh, on Zoom, huge thank you for the honor of having uh, thought that I could be president of this club. It's been a really fun ride, uh, very different than what all of us expected. We navigated the Zoom, uh, I'm sorry, the COVID, um, difficult times, easier times, but here we are all together and stronger than ever. So, um, I, you know, of course in Rotary the nice thing that happens is that you never do anything by yourself. So we are a team and I would like to thank many of you who are here who were able to fill in for me when I was not available to do it or you know when there was something that um, speakers you were bringing or a topic you wanted to discuss or when you were invited to come to speak at the microphone with your, about your initiatives thank you all Marshall thank you for always saying yes and Eric I think I saw you coming in same thing you know Super thank you for all what you have done um, with the nominating committee and the programs committee. It's been a year of great speakers. Alita, thank you <laughs> for giving me a shoulder when I needed one. I won't forget that. Uh, and um, gosh, you're going to be president elect now. So, okay. Well, I'm here for you. <laughs> all right. Know that already. Okay. And Sarah, also your president nominee. Now I'm here also for you. <laughs> so, thanks again for covering last Tuesday for the, for the last club assembly of this year. Um, well, you know, I just uh, came back uh, from a trip that was mixed holiday and uh, more Rotary than holiday. And I was in France meeting with Rotarians there as well as in Spain. And the Rotary, were a lot of people here, about 1.4 million members, but it is amazing how small the family becomes because I have found in both countries uh, projects, I mean, countries in which we were working in projects and we knew the same people. So all this is going to be um, converted into a stronger cooperation among our clubs and our districts. So it was really beautiful to see. Uh, and I would like to give a special thanks. Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh my Marga. gosh, I love it. So we want to thank you for all that you've done this year and helping us get through all that we've done. And I believe there's a picture of your stone that's already been installed at the Paul Harris Memorial Walk for your year. Oh gosh, thank you so much. This was, thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it, and you know I love flowers. Okay, everybody in Zoom, did you see them? Did they see the flowers? Okay, well, I have something also uh, that while the program is going, I'm going to give to my members, the board, uh, the members of the board of directors during my year as president. So it will come to your table. I'll be delivering it, but I don't want to take more time than uh, I have. So. Um, we have great speakers today. We already know how, you know, we ask the questions at the end of their presentation. And that goes for both Zoom guests and uh, all of us here. So for and now, I would like to, inter to bring Marshall to come and introduce our guests. Uh, 
So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, you're about to hear about a wonderful organization that I was introduced to uh, back in March. And by way of introduction, um, several years ago, I served as the chairman of the special ed cooperative out in the western suburbs. And the biggest problem that the special education community faces is providing uh, programming and housing uh, for people with developmental disabilities once they are out of the school system. And um, in March, Cheryl McIntyre and Lisa Russ and I went to the um, Kansas City 13 Club, which had made a very generous contribution to the uh, Paul Harris home. And we invited everyone to come. And uh, at the end of the presentation, Peter Ho, who I'm going to call to the podium in a minute, walked up to us and said, you know, I'm going to be in Chicago uh, for an event uh, in a few weeks. Um, uh, you know, would it be possible to arrange a uh, tour of the home? And I said, certainly. And one thing led to another, and he explained to me about what he was doing in the organization. And I realized just how important, based on my experience with special education, this organization is and how important uh, Envision Unlimited is. So, Peter, could you come to the podium and and just uh, introduce uh, uh, introduce the organization and our speakers? Thank you so much for coming. Well, thank you, Marshall. Um, I'm a visiting Rotarian from Kansas City, but Chicago is my hometown. So I grew up here, went to school here, um, met my wife here, um, got married here, started our family, and then moved to Kansas City, you know, 20 plus years ago. But I still have roots here. I have two sisters here in um, Chicago, and one of them is um, special needs, and she has a intellectual and and developmental disability. And Envision Unlimited, which you'll hear about later, um, is the organization that has been supporting her for forty plus years, um, pretty much her entire adult life to date, and. Um, since the passing of my father a few years ago, I want to learn a little bit about more about the organization and what they were doing for my sister. Because I was busy with my own family and life and all that. Um, but it wasn't until um, Marshall, as he mentioned, came to Kansas City and shared the Paul Harris um, restoration project. And even back before that, um, I was club president in 2016 and 2017 in Kansas City, um, and then we have a whole succession plan, and we knew who the next president was going to be. Joe Privatera was our club president in 2019, 20, uh, 2019, 2020, and that's he met Marshall. I know at the large club conference in Long Beach, he also saw Marshall again at the Hamburg, Germany International Convention in 2019, all pre-COVID. And Joe, who's very passionate when he finds something that is worthwhile, came back to our club and said, this Paul Harris fellow home is in its last stages of being restored. They need a little bit more money to get over the finish line. And he made a impassioned plea to our members to all help contribute. And we all did. And we stepped up and our membership in Kansas City donated uh, 50,000 to help complete the um, project. And so um, with that, and as Marshall said, you know, um, I said, I want to see the home because I'm coming to envision Unlimited's groundbreaking of this great new senior fully accessible ADA home. Um, envision calls these community integrated living arrangements. They're called SILAs for short. And it's the first new construction uh, home. And as I got to learn more about the project, um, Marty, who I'll just a minute, asked, what do I do for a living? And I said, well, I'm an architect and I manage projects for various clients. And this home was already designed. However, they need someone to help manage the project, organizing the you know, construction team along with the engineers. And I happen to have a contact from my past days in Chicago working. And one of the um, general contractors has agreed to step up and be a general contractor for the home. And so now we're in permitting and we're going to hopefully get our permit soon. And with that, I'll let um, I'll introduce Marty Kenahan, who is the chief development officer 
for Envision Unlimited, and then she'll introduce both William and Mark. Hello, everyone. Good to be here today. Thank you for inviting us. It's just so inspiring to hear the Rotary story and know the impact that Rotary has all across the world and and also kind of all through the years. Um, I believe you're going to put up a photograph uh, from 1961 before we talk any more about Envision Unlimited. I just wanted to give you a little background about how I've been involved with Rotary pretty much all my life. <laughs> That's my mom, but um, I think I look a little bit like her. Uh, that's back in 1961 when uh, Ernest Buttress was passing the gavel to to my dad, Herman Mosby, and I think my mom is there sort of showing the probably the president's pin, you know, putting the lapel pin on him. And um, when I knew that I was coming today, I thought that would be a fun thing to share and uh, talk about, you know, what a big deal Rotary was in our little hometown in Mississippi. So when I was growing up, it was a great honor to be the Rotary Girl of the Month and the Rotary Boy of the Month. So someone, someone from the high school, a senior, you know, would come to the meeting and you'd, you'd talk a little bit about what you were doing in school and what your plans were for the future and that kind of thing. So <clears throat> I, I'm uh, one of seven children, so a lot of the Mosby kids did this over the years. And I asked my sisters to recall some memories. Uh, there's about 12 years uh, separating us. So the eldest one, you know, kind of told her stories and I told mine and, but the best one was that middle, that middle child, you know, I always think the middle, middle child has it the best. And uh, my sister Mary said, well, the, the time I was the Rotary Girl of the Month, she said, and do you remember, we were called Rotary Anns. And I said, I don't remember that. So I Googled it <clears throat> and actually I saw that um, the wives of Rotarians were referred to as Rotary Anns, and I really enjoyed meeting Betsy when I first arrived, and, and we were kind of talking about the role of women in Rotary over the years. Um, so, so Mary said, oh yeah, I was the Rotary Ann that month, and uh, it was really great because there was a club from Australia that came, again, to this tiny town in Mississippi. It was a huge deal, and she even received one of their uh, Rotary pens that had a kangaroo on it. And she still has it. <laughs> so um, it was it was a big, big deal for us, you know, and I talked to some friends who are still in Rotary in this little town in Mississippi, and they said um, things kind of fell apart during the pandemic, uh, but now they're back and they, they have about 30 members um, coming and, and going strong still with with Rotary. Um, we're happy to be here today to tell you more about Envision Unlimited, and I know our time is so limited. I uh, do really appreciate and want to say uh, thank you to Peter Ho and to Marshall for inviting us here today and helping to build this partnership between Envision and um, and Rotary and and help you learn more more about our home that I think Mark will refer to later. But before that, um, we're going to show you our brand video um, to give you a little background. We are Envision Unlimited. Since 1948, we have delivered industry-leading services for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We are a compassionate community. Families, staff, supporters, and those we serve advocating together. We strive to give our members more choice and independence and to fully integrate them into every aspect of society. Envision's innovative programs support and uplift more than 3,000 Northern and Central Illinois residents with disabilities as well as their families. We proudly helped more than 300 individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities to live in the Chicagoland community of their choice. We have 37 homes throughout the city and suburbs, providing 24-hour support. Our in-home respite program now serves 45 families across 19 Illinois counties. When we saw the skyrocketing number of autism diagnoses, we expanded our ABA therapy program to include children from 2 to 17 years old. We offer day programs, community living and respite services, traditional and specialized foster care, employment services, 
and autism therapy. In 2021, our mental health professionals delivered vital care to nearly 200 members, an increase of almost 25% in one year. Thanks to our supporters, we now deliver day programs to more than 660 individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And we produce over 870 hours of online fitness and educational programs for those in our day centers and at home. We also empower 14 of our members to lead classes because leadership helps them reach their highest potential. At Envision, we believe everyone, given the right opportunities, can achieve significant breakthroughs and lead a satisfying life. And we work tirelessly to bring down the barriers and disprove the stereotypes facing those with disabilities. Today, there are more than 37,000 Illinois residents on waiting lists for services Envision provides. We can't serve them all, but with your financial support, we certainly can make a greater impact. Thank you. That gives a little background on the variety of services, and I know that Mark's going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, and again, just uh, Want to, want to also introduce uh, my friend William, if you'll come on up here. We have a philosophy at Envision Unlimited, nothing about us without us. And um, William is a great uh, advocate for uh, the people who are served by Envision, and he's here to tell you a little bit about uh, some of the things he's involved with. William? Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you all for having me. Um, <clears throat> My my name is William. I have been at Envision Unlimited since since March 7th, 2001. When I first got there, it was, you know, it started off as C-A-R-C. -C. Um, the special event, um, Friday, I went to um, the fashion show and I took some pictures of the uh, uh, people modeling. I got some, you know, as part of the media club, I got some great pictures. Um, media club. Um, I took pictures like places like the fashion show, uh, Big Marsh, and uh, Gala Ball. Zero Landfill, um, I believe that I did that in May. Was it in May? Um, I was on TV and this um, Melissa, I think she's the Channel 2 girl, I'm not sure. She interviewed me about Zero Landfill. I expect for 1,825 people to show up, but only very few people showed up. I got very disappointed that a lot of people did not show up as I hope that it that that I hope that it will turn I hope that it would be. Um Big Marsh. I only been to Big Marsh for two times. The first time I been to Big Marsh, I was cutting down buckthorns. We were mulching the ground. Uh, Jimmy, the guy, had taken pictures of us of, you know, cutting down trees. Um, there's this lady named Julia. She, um, they put the ribbon on the tree to see which uh tree are the bad trees 
and we cut down the bad trees. Buddy biking, I'm not so much about riding the bike, but when I rode the bike, I was the pilot um, where I sit on the uh, front and the other person sit on the bike uh, in the back. Um, I buddy bike with, um, I forgot his name. What's his name? Not Tim Smith, but the other guy. Mark Jackson, that's it, Mark Jackson. I buddy bike with Mark Jackson. And before the pandemic, I buddy bike, um, what's her name? Um, the, the, the main point is that uh, yeah buddy by two people yeah it, it's it's a program that we have for people with and without disabilities to ride tandem bikes together and we even ride it bike the drive and you were the pilot yeah the drive. yeah but right now i'm much of a power walk i like to power walk and jog a little bit um Unlimited Voices is um, it's a newsletter of of what you want your article to be and what you what you want your article you would name your article. It depends on what is your article is talking about. So um, this is all I have on my list. I want to say thank you all very much for having me. And it's been a pleasure talking. Oh, I would like to call Mark McHugh, the CEO. William, thank you. Appreciate it. Marty, thanks very much. Hi, everybody. It's so great to be here. Um, I know one thing for sure is that whenever you're in a group of Rotarians, you're in the room with a group of friends. Um, always make uh, people feel welcome. And that is that has been my takeaway um, on the Rotary for, for many, many years. So um, thanks so much for allowing us to be here. Um, so, you know, Envision Unlimited has been around a long time and has helped make a, such a huge transition for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and people with serious mental illness over many years. It used to be decades ago where uh, people with the, uh, these disabilities weren't out in the community, right? They were put away, um, isolated. Um, not included, not really having much choice in their lives. Their lives were run by others. Um, our philosophy is the exact opposite of that. I'll take you to the beginning of that video. We are about choice, independence, and inclusion. We want to help people have as much choice in their lives as they possibly can. We want them to live as independently as they can. And we want them to be part of a larger community. That's why we're all here to, today is to create that community. William's part of that community. Um, and our, the experiences that we help people at, um, have at Envision Unlimited are based on what they're looking for, how they want to live their lives. So do you want to um, get healthier and exercise? We've got in motion for Envision for that. And that includes the buddy biking program and uh, bike the drive and really programming throughout. Pandemic comes and you still want to be involved with others, big problem. We built on our IT expertise and create virtual programming. It's all about pe keeping people connected. You want to live in a community with others? We have these great group homes to do that. Do you want to live with a family? Well, we have a host family home. Do you want to live in your own apartment? We can help you do that. People who want jobs don't have to wait years and years to get them. If you want a job, Envision Unlimited will help you start to try and get that job today based on your skills, abilities, and interests. Um, so this is what really we're about, helping people to transition to lives of choice, independence, and inclusion. 
Last year, <clears throat> last year we helped people, we helped a hundred people with serious mental illness transition from institutional settings um, into their own apartments. We did so well that this year we're doubling that target. Um, and when you when you when you're successful like that, you get more support to do it. We did that, and um, and now people who had spent years and years and years in either mental health institutions or nursing homes are living by themselves with support and help from our staff. So that's what we're about. Today, I, and you see some really cool um, pictures, or a really cool picture be, uh, behind us, behind me. <clears throat> and that's, this is related um, to a problem that we're trying to solve around access. Um, at, Everyone, as everyone ages, our physical abilities become, um, you know, more and more challenging. And sometimes uh, our physical abilities are such where we can't really live in the in our homes the way we did before, and need a new kind of support. We've seen so many people who have had to transition into nursing homes just because of their uh, their phys uh, physical issues related to aging. Um, and it's our job to stop that and create new solutions for that. This is one of those where we're, we're, uh, we are developing a completely ADA accessible home for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Peter is an integral part of this project. Um, and the moment that he said to Marty, I'm an architect, that was it. <laughs> he was he he was hooked, um, and he has been an amazing support for this project. I don't know how we'd be able to do this without him. Um, but what you see here is a is a rendering. I'll kind of step back so that um, those of you in the room can see it. I think you can see it on Zoom as well. Um, but oh, thank you. Are oh, you gonna you're gonna do the thing for me? Thank you. <clears throat> I do have yeah. There are four. Okay. So this home, uh, this home is the first of its kind because it is built is going to be built from the ground up. It is on slab, uh, and uh, will be um, for six individuals with developmental disabilities, um, each with their own bedroom, um, each uh, also with large common areas, lots of light, uh, and. Um, uh, like I say, a first of its kind because it's built specifically for this purpose here in Chicago. Um, you'll see in the in the next piece, uh, in the next uh, 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 picture here, um, kind of how it looks like from the side. Lots of green space um, for people to be able to garden, uh, grow vegetables, um, enjoy the sunlight, uh, and just kind of be outside enjoying the day. And on the next slide. Call them slides, but um, this is a, a view from inside the house, um, and you can see that it's large open spaces, um, especially uh, accommodating for um, people with physical disabilities, uh, and um, being able to move around easier, use uh, the appliances easier, um, and the like. And then finally. Um, this this uh, rendering just shows how much light there is going to be. It's really going to be a very inviting space inside and out. Um, and will be a home for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities who also have physical um, disabilities for years and years to come. This is going to be their community home to age in place. Thank you, Marshall. We're at the, thank you so much. We're at the point of this project now where we are almost done with the per permitting process. Everybody cross your fingers on that, um, which takes a, a little extra time uh, in Chicago. But we are really, really close uh, and uh, believe that we'll be able to break ground in August. OK, <laughs> keep your fingers crossed till August. Uh, we have had such great support for this um, project, as you can imagine, um, it is very expensive project, um, but we have had uh, so much um, not only financial support from our board and from others, but what another thing that makes us unique is so much in-kind support from contractors and lab uh, uh, construction labor unions um, and suppliers. 
So we have a little ways to go, um, but we believe that we're going to be able to um, get to our funding goal in the next few months. And um, this is really exciting because it is the first step, not the last step, in helping people with developmental disabilities age in place here in the Chicago area. Thank you. Thank you. And we would be happy to take questions. Is it time for questions? We'd be happy to take questions. I say we, I'm the only one up here, but the, other, the others will also help ask, answer questions if needed as well. Anyone? One, two, three, four. Yeah. Hello, I'm Adriana Dapan uh, I want to ask a question related to students. I work at a city college of Chicago, and I wonder if you have established any kind of partnership uh, with them, because there are seven colleges around the city, and it might be beneficial because we have some students that are, you know, uh, belong to what you serve. Yep. And uh, it might be, you know, a lot of uh, useful things to just partnership with them for their education goals as well. You know, that, that would be great. I'd love to talk to you afterwards. We get changed information and, and uh, take it from there. You know, thanks very much. <clears throat> so if you can, do you have any presence at all on the north side of Chicago? We do. We have uh, both group homes, uh, day centers, uh, clinical mental health services on uh, the north side, and and we do our we do have a foster care program for children with disabilities um, that spans the county. Well, if you're working with teenagers uh, with different abilities, uh, there is a Rotarian uh, that started an organization in Boulder, Colorado by which he hired kids, um, in some cases, in the autism spectrum. Yep. And he also, at the same time, received donations of computers, mobile phones, printers, etc. And these children are, these students, you know, are specifically their idea for doing this small, this, um, how do you say, minutious work. Um, is in dismantling all this um, mm -hmm. equipment and then sending it for recycling. And there is another um, a, a sister organization that was open in the North Shore of Chicago. I can't remember exactly. Buffalo Grove, could it be? Yes. So if you have to, about. and also what is happening is that these children get real jobs. So instead yeah. of depending on the social services, they contribute to the economy because yep. they pay their taxes and they have real jobs. So if there is some kind of a synergy, I would like to help you with some connections. Oh, that sounds good. We can talk afterwards about that. It sounds very familiar okay. to an organization. I know. Yeah. Thank you. I think we have. William, I think the gentleman, couple gentlemen back here are first. We'll get you. And then we'll. Next. I'm curious because there's another organization I'm familiar with. To understand yours better, how would you compare it to, if you're familiar with it, Park Lawn School in Oak Lawn? Yep. Um, so we, uh, I am a little familiar with Park Lawn. Uh, they, um, I know they have a, a day service, which we have several day programs throughout. Chicago area. Um, they're a small organization, good reputation, uh, so some similarities there. Um, there are some services that are unique to Envision Unlimited. Our, our respite services, for example, we have some specialized group homes for people who are really high behavior needs. Um, they're unique to us. Our mental health program, uh, which, which also um, helps not only people with who have only a mental health diagnosis, but those who um, have an intellectual or developmental disability and a mental health diagnosis. So there's some, the comparison would just be there are some differences in the program offerings that we do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I didn't quite catch it earlier, uh, but where is the location of your new facility? It is in the Auburn Gresham neighborhood in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And I have to tell you, it's in a, it's in a the general vicinity of a, a uh, an area that where we have a number of homes. It is a gorgeous neighborhood. It's it's really yeah. Uh, so, Mark, it's not as much a question as it is an invitation. So, as you can tell from uh, the questions today, Rotary is obviously an organization that 
values networking and making connections, which is a big reason why right. I wanted you guys to come here today. Um, I, I really invite you and encourage you to the extent that you know you have an identified need for a program or the need to make a connection with another community organization uh, to come to us and see whether or not we can help you in that regard. That's something that we can do that's unique and uh, given the breadth of what you do and the, the huge demand that you face, it's really important that organizations like yours and uh, Rotary um, you know, work together and network to make sure that we can take advantage of our full potential. That's great. Thanks so much, Marshall, for that invitation. So we also have a couple um, questions on Zoom. So uh, could we ask the individuals that have questions on Zoom to unmute themselves and ask their questions? I know Eugene Sullivan, if you want to kick off our virtual questions. Mark, very interesting. Um, with so many people you've been giving services to and so many that are in need of them, how, how does the organization decide what to do and, and who to help? Oh, that's a good question. So there are um, literally thousands of people on the waiting list for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities um, on the waiting list to, for services. Uh, and um, even more people who don't have access to mental health care. Uh, and so, you know, our, um, you know, really our, our, our vision and our mission is to serve as many people as possible. And therefore, it's important to me um, that we continue to grow every year to whittle down that need. Um, uh, we were based um, further, we were based, you know, historically here in Chicago. Uh, but, uh, you know, as we saw needs in other parts of the area, in the suburbs, um, especially the south suburbs, and uh, eventually in central Illinois, uh, you know, we built on the capacity that we had uh, in order to expand services there to many more people who had, you know, who just didn't have it. For example, our, our respite program, which helps families um, where they have a child, typically where they have a child who lives with them, uh, you know, they, they need a break sometimes. Sometimes it's a mental break. Sometimes it's a, I just need to go do something and I need somebody to be with, with my, my child. Uh, it was a complete desert in central Illinois. So we look for places like that there, where there is great need and where we have the capacity to build on um, something on our existing expertise, something we're already doing. And, it's, and in some er in sometimes, um, such as our... Um, children's autism program to build brand new programming where we see great need. We have, we have one more question on Zoom and I'll uh, go ahead and read that. The question is, how would you go about contacting your organization when your special needs person has a letter of recommendation and is looking for placement? So I thank you for that question. I understand that to mean that I'm going to use a little jargon here that they've been pulled from the puns list. And uh, if if that's the case, um, then they go through their independent service coordination agency and tell them that they want to visit Envision Unlimited um, and they'll they'll get that they'll get that connection. That's just how it works in, in Illinois. Okay. Uh, and if if there's still a question they, they can have my phone number after this as well. I mean, they can have my phone number, they can call me. Fantastic, thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, as you said, we um, like to report on your connections here. So yes. as Marshall said, you know how to find us. Yes, okay. thank you. My pleasure. All right, so uh, thank you very much. William, thank you for your presentation as well. You have here a token of our appreciation that you're going to be getting in the mail or perhaps there is a hard copy, I'm not sure today. Uh, but uh, we appreciate that you're here with us and do stay in touch. All right, now we proceed to introduce our guests. Uh, and um, I see one person here. Okay. Would you tell us your name, please, and how, how you came to our club? Um, uh, Karen, 
May I have, it, have the microphone? Thank you. My name is Ahmed Abdel Hakam. I'm coming from Egypt, uh, Rotary Club, Cairo New Capital. That's the name of our Rotary Club. Um, I'm here for attending the ISSP conference. So on my way to here, so I said, it's a very good opportunity if I can get in touch with the Rotary Club here in Chicago, such that we can understand what we are doing, both of us, both clubs, if there can be any chance, chances for mutual cooperation uh, agreements, whatsoever we can be doing. Uh, I'm very thankful for this presentation because actually uh, in Egypt and our club, we almost did something same as such project. But uh, what we have in Egypt, what we call street children, that they are homeless, they don't have uh, any home there, even their parents are not there. So there is a foundation or some sort of an organization, same as yours, and we had uh, done uh, some efforts with them last year, 2021-2022. Uh, we have actually hosted some of them, funded some of the projects they are doing. So this is part of what we have been doing last year. So I'm very glad to hear we are almost the same <laughs> any part of the world, focus, focusing on the seven areas of focus for the Rotary. We are, we are working on them, many projects we are going through, water, environment, community. So uh, thanks for hosting me today. Thanks for uh, letting me come in and, and see you guys, uh, meeting with you, introducing. That's a very good opportunity. Uh, we are doing the same all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's good that to see each other and understand uh, different cultures. How do you do it here in the US? How do we do it in Egypt? And how we can be cooperating for that? So thanks for hosting me today. Thank you. Well, Ahmed, I'm very happy that your schedule allowed you to be with us today. So thank you for coming. All right. So let me see. Do we have other Rotarians from other um, clubs here? No, I think they're all familiar faces today. Let me take a look who is on Zoom. <clears throat> Well, I see uh, Mr. Bab Labiak, <clears throat> if you are still, if you can hear us, would you like to introduce yourself? Well, thank you. Uh, this is Larry Labiak. I'm the uh, Disability Policy Officer for the Chicago Park District, and I'm here as a guest today. Certainly interested in the great work that you have done for uh, uh, a century plus, and as well, the great work that Envision Unlimited uh, is doing, and always appreciate the involvement and interest of Rotarians in the lives of individuals with disabilities or special needs. Thank you very much for having us, and I hope that next time you can come and visit us in person. Thank you very much. <laughs> Your pleasure, my pleasure. Well, I see Irv and Ruth here that they join us every week. So it's great to have you, Irv. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm uh, not happy it's your last meeting, but on the other hand, it's not the last. It's just the end of the year. And to, uh, tomorrow we'll begin again. Well, Irv, thank you so much. And for those of you who don't know, Irv is a past district governor in our district, and he had something to do with that gift, you know, the stone with my name, the gift that I have received from all of you. So, Irv, big thank you. I so appreciate uh, the, the, the gift and you who thought of it. Well, I'm grateful to your club. And I'm happy they presented you with that honor. You uh, more than deserve it. You don't expect this on a Zoom meeting, but I've enjoyed your year immensely. Thank you very much, Marga. My pleasure. Okay. All right. And I see we have Steve from Exceed Enterprises. Steve, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm uh, Steve Achilles and uh, from, from Oregon, and I'm a CEO of an organization similar to Envision and have been able to attend in Chicago before because my family and I are relocating to Chicago 
in August. So I look forward to seeing you all again in a couple of months. Well, Mark, we are about networking. I think you have to start taking some notes after this meeting. <laughs> Excellent. So let's make sure, well, um, um, Steve, uh, I think our office has your contact information. We will provide it to Mark so you guys get in touch. All right. Well, uh, now I would like to have Alita tell us about the upcoming volunteer opportunities, or would you like me to share them? Okay, come on over. <laughs> you know, that's what it said here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So we have three um, upcoming volunteer opportunities. Um, one is with the Jesse White Trunk Party. We do this every year. Um, we help with the Jesse White Foundation. They give out 500 trunks to students going off to college. And so on Friday, July 15th, I'm sorry, I didn't put my glasses on. Uh, Friday, July 15th, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., we need to get all the stuff together and start packing the 500 trunks. And then on July 16th, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., we're going to finish any packing and then distribute them to the students. We are still doing it outside um, for COVID, COVID, COVID protocols, um, just 500 kids and parents and yeah, so but um, so we need help directing traffic, we need help moving bags, um, checking students in and all those wonderful things on the 16th. And then on July 20th at Breaking Bed, Breaking Bread Ministries, we are going to be helping out in a soup kitchen that I work at. So um, we are going to prepare meals and distribute them to the homeless and the seniors in the community. And there are two shifts from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. That's if you want to come in the kitchen and cook with me, come at 2. <laughs> and from 4 to 7 is when we um, just set up everything that we do for distribution to pack the bags and hand them out. And we deliver them to the seniors in the community. And the other great part of this is also our job one students will be at one or all three of these events. So this is also a great time to meet and interact with our wonderful job one students that we have this summer. Thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you, Alita, very much. And now, uh, well, I'm going to be telling you about our upcoming uh, meetings. Um, Always, you know, when you read the dry writer, uh, we announce them ahead of time. But um, so here with regard to the committee meetings, on Wednesday, we have the International Service Committee meeting. So everybody's invited to attend. And uh, on July 7th, we have the Community Service Committee. Uh, on the 15th, we have two meetings. The Membership Committee and the PR and Marketing Committee are meeting. So you're welcome to join all of them. Okay, and on July 5th uh, at 5.30, uh, we have one of our Rotary After Work events. Kelly Hobson from Lincoln Limited Scholars, if you remember, is going to be speaking to us and telling us more about the organization. This is going to be only in person at uh, Bernstein Wealth Management Offices. This is Bob Westrop's office. Uh, 227 West Monroe Street, Suite 5900. So do register for this. Um, it is going to be super interesting and let's, um, uh, let's come to Bob's office, all right? For July 12th, uh, we have not a program yet. And on the 19th, we have uh, Carol Wood at lunchtime here. She is the United um, ULCC Public Affairs Chair at Northwestern University Settlement House. So uh, come and, and join us. And that is all what you we have for today. So if you have any questions or suggestions, Timo, our president elect, as of president on July 1st, he's the man you have to talk with. <laughs> Okay, and now to close our meetings, um, Ahmed, I would like to, I'm not going to put in the spot, this is easy, but we have a tradition of reading the four-way test. Would you like to come to the podium and read the four-way test? Absolutely. Uh, you, you read it from, there, there, there. Come to the microphone so everybody can hear you. Okay. 
Yes, I'm here. Yes. Hmm? Okay. yes. Everybody, please stand. And you have them there. Yeah, it's it's my honor to do it. Thanks. <laughs> so the four-way test of things we think, we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it, is it fair to all concerned? concerned? Will it be, Will it be goodwill? goodwill and better friendships? Will it be, Will it be beneficial to all, all concerned? concerned? Thank you. Thank you very much, Ahmed. And with this, let's make sure I don't do that. <laughs> I close my last meeting as president of your club. Thank you so much.